Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing awesome. We hope you're always doing awesome. So, you see here out of <coughs> Rational Wiki, the photon belt. And it says, it's a nonsensical idea carried out by some new age and pseudoscientific groups. The you know, central belief is that the Earth will soon pass through an immense ring of photons which are orbiting Pleiades star cluster, or specifically the largest star, Alcyon. When the Earth passes through that, either the world's going to come to an end or humanity will be elevated into a higher plane of existence. So that's Rational Wiki, and of course that's just trying to debunk stuff, basically. Rationalism. You know, basically controlled by the corporate powers that want you to go to sleep. Go to sleep, little sheep, is what they're saying. There's nothing here, little sheep. Go to sleep. And here we see, this is out of Wikipedia, the photon belt is a belief linked to some parts of the New Age movement. And, you know, there, there's been talk about this for a long time. There's also been talk of a galactic superwave. And I first became aware of this all in, I want to say, 88, right around 1988. Um, when my daughter came and so it, it was interesting I was having a kind of a spiritual epiphany back then uh, while basically feeding her in the middle of the night giving her uh, her bottle one of those 3 a.m. feedings for all those of you that have done that before so why are we talking about this well we see over here this is really interesting a tremor in the Earth's magnetic field on June 23rd, Earth's quiet magnetic field was unexpectedly disturbed by a wave of magnetism that rippled around much of the globe. No solar storm or geomagnetic storm that caused the disturbance. What was it? Isn't that curious? It really is, you know, very, very curious. So, this is the link uh, talking about this a little bit more out of the Space Weather Archive. Out of nowhere, a global magnetic anomaly. So lately, Earth's magnetic field's been very quiet. Very, very quiet. The sun is in the pits of what may turn out to be the deepest solar minimum in a century or more. Perhaps centuries. Perhaps even longer. So geomagnetic storms just aren't happening. That's why I was so surprised when, on the 23rd, my instruments picked up a magnetic anomaly, reports Stuart Green, who operates a research-grade magnetometer in his backyard in Preston, UK. For more than 30 minutes, the local magnetic field oscillated like a sine wave. Oh, that's so curious, too. It, it really is, is it not? And um, Green quickly checks solar wind data from NOAA, and there's nothing. No uptick in solar wind speed or other factors. And he wasn't the only one who noticed it. In the Lofoten Islands of Norway, Rob Stams detected a similar anom anomaly on his magnetometer. It was remarkable. Our magnetic field swung back and forth by a third of a degree. I also detected ground currents within the same 10-minute period. So what happened? Space physicists call this phenomenon a pulsation continuous, or PC for short. Imagine blowing across a piece of paper, making it flutter with your breath. Solar wind can have a similar effect on the magnetic fields. PC waves are essentially flutters propagating down the flanks of the Earth's magnetosphere, excited by the breath of the sun. During more active phases of the solar cycle, these flutters are easily lost in the noise of rambunctious geomagnetic activity. But during the extreme quiet of the solar minimum, such waves can make themselves heard like a pin dropping in a silent room. The Earth's magnetic field was so quiet on the 23rd, the ripple was heard all around the world. Intermagnetic's global network of magnetic observatories picked up the wave activity at the same time from Hawaii to China to the Arctic Circle. There's even a hint of it in uh, Antarctica. PC waves are classified into five types depending on their period. The 10-minute wave on June 23rd falls into the category PC5. Slow PC5 waves have been linked to a loss of particles from the Van Allen radiation belts. Energetic electrons surf these waves down into the Earth's atmosphere where they dissipate harmlessly. With solar minimum in full swing, there's never been a better time to study these waves. Keep quiet and stay tuned for more. Well, again, space weather, NASA, NOAA, never a straight answer. These, these are agencies that are meant to kind of control the narrative. As, as we know, you know, with all the type of energetic 
influence uh, that these energy waves that we are bombarded with from time to time have caused volcanic and uh, quake activity as well most definitely cause changes in our brains. I mean, we're electromagnetic beings, so it's affecting our consciousness. Absolutely. It's affecting our consciousness. It's affecting our energy fields. It's it's affecting us as a, as a species. So I did a video um, not too long ago, uh, June 8th. Uh, Lift up your hearts, a new world is coming. The prophecy of Peter Dunov, galactic superwave. And boy, I had the hardest time remembering his name. So did Cindy. And uh, we, re we went to look for a link that we had in, in a video. We know we talked about him before I did this one, and the link wasn't there. So it's interesting. It's curious. It's like somebody wiped out the link that I had there. But uh, I did talk about his prophecy in this video, so check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. And why do we say this? Because he talks all about this. And, you know, he really gives a very, very clear explanation of what's going on. Our solar system is now transversing a region of the cosmos where a constellation that was destroyed left its mark, its dust. The crossing of contaminated space is a source of poisoning, not only for the inhabitants of the Earth, but for all the inhabitants of other planets in our, our galaxy itself. Only the suns are not affected by the influence of this hostile environment. So he calls that region the 13th zone, the zone of contradictions. And our planet was enclosed in this region for thousands of years. But finally, we're approaching the exit of this space of darkness. And this is why we are going to be leaving the Kali Yuga and why we were in the Kali Yuga, the Dark Age. And we're going to be going to a more spiritual region where more evolved beings live. And we are going to be hit with this energy wave is what he talks about. And this energy wave is going to change everything. And so, you know, that reminds me of First Corinthians, Lo, I will tell you a secret. You know, we shall not all sleep or not all die, but we shall all be changed. And perhaps, you know, where we are right now, we're, we're starting to be bathed in these energy waves. Our DNA is changing. Our consciousness is mutating. I've talked about Robert Felix's book many times about how, and he's the author of Not by Fire, But by Ice, who was one of the first ones really talking about the Grand Solar Minimum that's coming. And then the evolutionary leaps that come because of our shields being down. And then also the fact that we're heading into a zone that has energy that's just going to change us, literally. And it, it's a good change. And that's why the dark forces are doing what they're doing, because they are being... Well, their, their effect and ability to hold on to us is going to be negated and we are going to slip out of their grasp. And they are just trying to hold on to us as much as we can. And this energy wave, Peter Dunov says, is, is going to end up bringing about the big earth changes, the major earth changes, where he says entire continents will go underwater. Entire new continents will come up. And the, wor the world will be completely redone over and washed clean of the, all the darkness that has been upon it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of changes, a lot of changes to our bodies and our brains. And they're trying to keep this covered up so that we don't um, embrace it or we don't expect it. And it maybe if by keeping it covered up, we would push it away because it's fearful. But no, this I've I've seen this energy wave go through humans. And actually what I've seen personally is something that might knock some of us on our rear ends a little bit. So that's why to me, I believe it's really important to be healthy right now. And I, I do think it's important to do energy work, to do qigong and meditation and mantras and things like that. You know, stay in prayer and uh, cultivate the love and gratitude in your heart because that will transform you. So he calls this new civilization that's going to happen. Uh, the brothers of humanity are also the children of love. And they will be unshakable for the good. And they will represent a new type of men, mankind men and women so we will form a family a large body and each people will represent an organ in this body and this new race love will manifest in such a perfect manner that today's man can only have a very very vague idea so that is where we are going and i take these things as signs 
that you know we are getting closer every day the changes are very real here we see oceans deep within the earth trigger earthquakes tsunamis and volcanoes near the surface as above so below and so the action of the plates themselves we, we discovered recently also that there's probably three times the amount of water locked up in the crust than there is in the oceans three times so can the earth be completely <laughs> washed over very quick yeah it could definitely could and these are things that they didn't teach us in school at all they kind of glazed over it and i feel they've known for quite some time and when we look at what's happening and we've talked a lot about china and china as well as every other country pretty much on the planet is going through massive earth changes as we see them trying to rescue this lady um the flooding there has been insane and obviously the countries now are scrambling to secure resources as resources are dwindling here you see severe hailstorm lashes beijing during the dragon boat festival in china as well there's videos here that you can see it's just some of the wild shapes look at that that's kind of beautiful isn't it those shapes and we have a large tornado moves through the countryside in northeast china as well so china's getting hammered india's getting hammered and of course china and india have troops facing each other right now and they're building up as we speak more than 130 killed in severe thunderstorms uh, for some reason india and obviously it has to do with the topography and again as above so below too the makeup perhaps of the rocks uh, th underneath your feet will also influence the lightning and india gets uh, a lot of lightning strikes some of the most in the world so that's a that's a huge death toll as you look at pretty intense lightning and we see also extraordinary lightning mega flashes in brazil and argentina as well setting new distance and duration records because our entire planet is changing it's evolving and what's going to come is going to be an incredibly massive upheaval so as we have been saying we need to prepare ourselves spiritually i think uh, is the highest priority but also of course physically mentally emotionally as well landslides in japan increased by nearly 50 percent in the last 10 years without a doubt there's mega changes going on um, yeah, you know, I mean, and, and, and it's just like this steady, constant uptick I've noticed too. It's like, when is it going to explode here? And here you see people sliding off the roads. Freak hailstorm creates rivers of hail in Colorado. And, you know, here we are, we're at the end of June and, and you got some spots that look like a winter wonderland. And I'll have all the links for you guys too. So if we think it's bad now, they say that 536 AD was even worse. And this is out of Electroverse. Um, why was it so bad? Hmm. Well, let's look. We see so so bad was 536 AD that even beat out 1349 AD. The year of the Black Death killed half the population of Europe. In 1918, the year when 100 million perished in the Spanish flu. In 536, a thick fog blanketed much of the Asian continent, the Middle East, and Europe, shrouding these regions in darkness for one and a half years straight. Yeah, darkness for one and a half years straight. According to natural, uh, natureworldnews.com, the ambient temperatures during that summer decreased by one and a half to two and a half degrees Celsius, contributing to that decade being the coldest for the last 2.3 millennia. Continents experienced unseasonable snowfall during this time. Crops died and many millions starved to death. Yeah, global warming is an issue, quote unquote. Uh, when you have rapid cooling like this, it's, it's a much bigger issue because this will bring about more problems with the food uh, supply, which we already have so much going on. New ice analysis has provided fresh insights into the cause. And you know what it was? It was a violent volcanic eruption in Iceland that was the culprit. The explosion released a thick plume of ash into the stratosphere. And these particulates quickly spread throughout the northern hemisphere in the early part of 536 AD, blocking out the sun and causing crop failures all across the hemisphere, killing millions upon millions of people. In addition, two more massive eruptions also occurred in 540 and 547. These re repeated eruptions caused untold suffering and economic stagnation in Europe for the next 100 plus years. 
until 640 AD. So that was big time. Yeah, and my question is, if this was such a huge impact, and it, and it was, it's, it's written in history, how come, how come we haven't been taught more about it? It's just one of those sidelines in history. They just, they just don't focus on these things, you know, unless you're taking earth science and, and you have somebody that really wants to get in depth with it. Uh, intense earthquake swarm continues, and this is in Iceland. So this is what we've been talking about, that Iceland is heating up. There's been a lot of swarming activity. There's indications that there's going to be some larger eruptions. So are we looking at a replay of 546? Um, it's only time will tell. But at the same time, because of the magnetosphere, because of all these energies, we're going to be getting a lot more volcanic activity, a lot more big, un massive quakes. And here we have that un unprecedented Sahara dust storm. This is... This is the biggest one on record, they're saying. And this is also causing breathing problems. You know, interesting. This is the year of I can't breathe, mm -hmm. right? In more ways than one, masks over face, mm -hmm. dust storm, and, of course, that triggering event. This is the most extreme on record, they say. And then the locusts now heading towards Brazil and Uruguay. 15 kilometer locust square kilometer after invading northeast argentina and you know word is it's going to come up through the southwest yep, yep. word is it's going to come through eight states and it, it's going to get kind of close to home very much so and um yeah it's just one more thing to contend with my friends and meanwhile, a river in China, Myanmar border, just turned blood red as well. So is it another toxic runoff? You know, the odds are high in that favor. We've seen so many of these uh, bodies of water turning blood red. So while we have time, here's five things you got to do before SHTF. Not that the SHTF hasn't been hitting the, the fan, the, the, you know, the crap's been hitting the fan all year long. Uh -huh. Yeah, it sure has. But here's, we, we like to focus on a solution. You know, starting out with handfuls perhaps hitting the fan, then going to bucketfuls. Now it's coming to truckloads. Truckloads, yep. yep. So here's some things. Take into consideration things like health. And we've been talking about that, especially today in, in the live we did. Dental, mental, and vision. I mean, the better shape you are in physically and mentally, the better your chances of survival. It, think about it. Think about it. You know, what, what happens, you know, like a tooth abscess they bring up. Um, there could be a million different things that, that could happen physically. Now is the time to get yourself as strong as possible. Build your immune system. Stop eating high fructose corn syrup. Stop eating all these garbage processed foods. Stop drinking soda. You know, maybe try that carbonated water. Um, instead of taking in any sort of simple sugars, which are going to just lower your immune system and maintain your vehicles. And maybe, maybe you know, you don't let your gas run out. <laughs> maybe you just keep refilling when you're at half a tank. Maybe start storing some gas. And if you do have a little bit of gas stored, maybe store a little bit more. Maybe th think about things like um, generators that will run off of gas and propane. For instance, you know, there's so many different things. Get yourself ready. You don't know what's going to happen in this world next. You really don't. Uh, make plans and, you know, talk to f friends, family, neighbors, things like that. Uh, what happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? We talked about splitting up your supplies in more than one location so that, you know, not all your eggs are in one basket. Hone your skills and abilities while you still have the chance. You know, things like building a fire. Um, you know, any, any sort of survival skills and self-defense skills as well. And prep for those who can't prep because we all have family members and loved ones that just don't listen. No, <laughs> they don't listen. It's not because they don't love us. It's just, you know, they're, they're preoccupied. Yeah, or asleep mm -hmm. or have their blinders on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the ones that you love and, and you know, take care of them too or have plans for them uh, perhaps have supplies for them you know think about that and think about the long-term haul too you know if, if the government has warned us as they did a long, quite a while ago 
to be ready with six for six months on your own without the grid, uh, take into consideration to the loved ones that are going to come rushing on your door because they didn't prepare. It's, it's going to happen, so prepare for them. So, guys, I want to thank you again for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Uh, you guys keep us afloat in this world of censorship, and we love you guys so much. Be prepared. God bless and namaste. God bless and namaste.